and it also has some tainted qualities. It doesn't mean Absolutely. the devil and all of the stuff that Christians think it means. Yeah. Lucifer is just the, the, the light of the morning, the sunlight, the sun king, the sun god, the old Aton king or Aton god. Yeah. So who is it that is creating these divisions between lower Jews, religious Jews, and Islamic people? Are the higher Jews, the capital J, Judites or Judeans, who yeah. are the old cult of Aton of the past, they are the ones who want to keep a camouflage puppet show in front of us so that they and their royal dynasties, the real Jews, can operate uh, loose in the world from on high. Is this the, the core of Judaism, or uh, how, how far back can we, can we take this? Do we know? Well, the word Jew does not appear before the 18th century. Hmm. The Bible never even used the word, but no Bibles used the word Jew. The word J-E-W came into existence about the 1800s, so that's very yeah. recent. Yeah. It really is a code word standing for Judean or Judite. Yeah. People, researchers, will tell you that that refers to those who lived in Judea. That's also not, that's also not being exposed as pretty much nonsense, that there was no such place as Judea, hmm. and it didn't refer to any coherent group of people. That's all just mind-controlled consensus trance of Judeo-Christianity that brought you up from day one, telling you that there's a place called Judea, hmm. or peoples that were known as Judeans. No, it refers to an elite group of Israelite pharaohs that lived in Egypt, who may have who used that term, but it was more like the term that we would use today for judge. Ah, so I rather see. than having anything to do with a specific race of people, it yeah. had to do with a spiritual or a theological status, hmm. particularly that they were priests of the sun. So, in other words, you used the word Ayuda or Yuda if you were a people of the light, that you were of the solar church. Hmm. And this is what this Lucifer is also a modern catchphrase for. It just means a, a churchman, a man of the light of the temples of Sun, of Heliopolis, of Giza, of Amarna, and uh, of another place called Avaris. There was a huge uh, solar church operating in Egypt. So it goes yeah. back um, to that period of time, roughly about the 1400 years B.C., and specifically to the time of uh, Amenhotep the Third, yeah. to the famous Amenhotep the Fourth that we know better as Akhenaten. Interesting. This is about how far back it goes. Ah, interesting. And... And, I mean, to, to connect all these, these different, as we talked about earlier, you know, that the, uh, the, the Christians, the Muslims, and uh, the Jews, you know, that is, is the, the high, higher up in, in these in the levels here, up the pyramid, is, is it ultimately Freemasonry that, that connects these groups? Or, uh yes, but remember, Freemasonry are like uh, lower janitors, who uh, many of them, most of them, don't know what I am talking about. What I'm talking about, I'm hoping to reach Freemasons. Yeah. And, and, and I hope to reach Rosicrucians and other people. And, and just as I'm trying to reach Christians and Jews, yeah. to explain to them what on earth is going on in their own order. Above the 33rd degree. Do you remember last week we were talking about how in the Illuminati, 8 degrees, Freemasons yeah. only number 4? Of course, yes. Yeah. Why don't Freemasons question this? Well, many have. And they understand that the highest degrees of Freemasonry are still very low degrees in what we will call the Atonist cult, or yeah. the Illuminati cult, yeah. or the Ordo Templi Orientis, you know, the true inner lodges of these groups. Oh, Joe, yes. Freemason is just a wing. Uh, it was really basically taken over and utilized in the 1700s. Yeah. But up until that time, Freemasonry was almost a nothing organization in the world. It was more like a scholarship type of thing, a kind of a guild, a relic. Yeah. had absolutely no political power whatsoever. It was just a, a sort of a apprenticeship club, a semi-esoteric, very powerless organization that existed for decades and de for, you know, for centuries. Yeah. It had no actual real clout or power. It was, it was brought forward and used by the Atonist cult of the Illuminati uh, down in the 1700s when they, when they wanted to um, permeate, permeate society, hmm. even more than they've done already. Yes. But, but that's be under no mistake that the people who are at the top of the pyramid, very high up in the Atonist cult, are nothing more than the royal dynasties of Europe. And even many of yeah. those characters are still outward lieutenants. The real people behind it are the royal dynasties of the world. Many of those figures have concocted biographies, you know, mm. so that we don't really know anything truly about them. Yeah. But that's who they are. These are the royal families who rule everything. And, of course, people behind the Vatican also. Yeah. Not the Vatican of Catholicism that people are probably aware of, but more from the Jesuit side and more of the secret club of Rome, you see, the propaganda yeah. due, the secret apparatus that operates behind the Vatican. Yeah. So, so e e Vatican together. Yeah, so ev everything here that we have been talking about and are talking about is connected. 
and we just have to you know find uh, find the, the the correct threads to to get to the source and and as you have uh said previously in in your works and your writings and and in your dvds that you know we we have to go further back in time and and now we have uh, we have all these these uh, smaller organizations that have been popping out from the larger ones and and now people are you know confused and don't know where to look or don't know who to blame so to speak and your uh, your your job here i guess is to you know sort this out and get get us you know further back into history where we be, where we are able to pick up on this thread right and you know one of the greatest problems is that the bible has been grossly misinterpreted First of all, like we said, the, the word Jew was not used until about the 1800s. We also find out that when, when people are talking about the religion of the Jews and they claim it to be the Torah, we've also got to understand that that is also only a very small part of the truth. Yeah. The, the Torah was basically the, the foundation of the Bible. And the Bible was put out in front of people in the 1600s. Yeah. So very late. But what we've got to realize even more than that is that the, the, the text of the Old Testament is not even the true religion of the ancient Jews that we're talking about. Yeah. Mount Sinai, Moses was handed down not just ten laws, not just the Torah, but the 72 elders right, were given the oral tradition, mm. which eventually in the 1500s AD becomes written down as the Talmud. Mm. And the Talmud is the doctrine of the Pharisees. The Pharisees is a new name for the Levites. The Levites is a new name for the cult of Aton. So running concurrently with the exoteric, in-your-face biblical stories, which anybody can pick up and go, there's the Bible. No. Behind that is the secret oral tradition. They even tell you about that themselves. Yeah. It's not any op opposer making that up. That's them telling you themselves that they have a hidden secret law, which is not good enough hmm. for even their own other 12 tribes. This was only handed to one tribe, the tribe of Levi. Yeah. Well, I'm here to tell people what that uh, extra-biblical you know, uh, testament was. Yeah. This is the old Egyptian concept that you're really worshipping Adonai. That Jehovah is nothing more than Adonai, is nothing yeah. more than Aton <laughs> or Adon. Exactly. And that you are operating from an oral tradition. So don't forget that when you're talking Judaism, are you talking Talmudism? Are you talking Phariseeism? Because there's a world of difference between the Jewish religion that's put before us today where people are you know, maybe reading the Torah yeah. and the secret tradition of the rabbinical Pharisaic, Luciferian, Talmudic um, school, yeah. which involves Kabbalistic studies, which came out of Egypt. Not that there's anything negative or evil about the Kabbalah. It's just one of the yeah. secret, uh, you know, doctrines that they operate with. Yeah. Hmm. And I one other interesting thing about this. Again, we talked about it in previous shows. People say, "Well, who did this?" You know, you can, they can't get a fix on where this was done. A lot of this rescripting of Judaism was done in Rome. Yeah. During the Roman times, when Rome became, you know, uh, converted through the works of the imposter Paul, but before Christianity was, before the Judaism was accepted by Western culture by Gentiles, a lot of this work was done by a group called the Gaonim, and this is why you see the letter G inside the Masonic compass. It's just like putting a signature uh -huh. when, you're when you're finished a piece of painting yeah. or you're finished something, you put your signature on it. Yeah. That G is the signature of a super Levitical group that was in charge of the oral secret tradition, and who knew that they had to codify it. What I'm saying is that they realized that you better not operate openly, because you've just been ousted from Egypt, yeah. your pharaoh is now a renegade, other cultures might do the same thing, and you don't have a homeland, and you ha you, you've lost most everything of the prestige that you had. Hmm. So if you're going to exist, you better exist behind a cover. So let, let people understand that it was in Assyria and Babylon and later in Rome and in Jerusalem, and, and all the way down in the centuries, that the secret order of the Gaonim wants to create the fake Judaism, the story of Abraham, the false story of Abraham and Joseph and Isaac and Jacob, you see? Yeah. The hidden, like in the next show, or next time we speak, we're going to actually go into the Dramatis Persona and explain who these Egyptian pharaohs really were. Yeah. But the Gaonim were the ones who would hide the original story. It's only in the recent times that uh, authors like Mustafa Gadala and Osman have brought out the fact that these, there was an Egyptian pharaonic dynasty in Egypt. Well, mm. it's, it's taken all these thousands of years, Henrik, because the Gaonim and their Levitical uh, you know, uh, lieutenants, yeah. as well as the pro-Zionist evangelist Christians and pastors and, and also Vatican Jesuit coterie, yeah. have been working overtime to make sure that you have a very faint 
and very vague understanding of what's really going on in the Old Testament and in the Bible. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, and the uh, that G. When you see that G, and you see the device of the Masonic compass and the and the protractors, yeah. And you know that somebody's doing some geometry behind your back. <laughs> and they've got their signature right there. The seventh letter of the alphabet. The yeah. seven. The seventh letter of the alphabet, yeah. which relates to the the guy on them, a super secret order, and people can go to my website and read all, read about it. Very important to expose these uh, architects of deception. Absolutely, and uh, uh, let us briefly touch upon the you know where where does Zionism and Zionists you know tie into this? Is, okay. is this also? I've got some, I'm glad that you made this incredible quote from Albert Pike because I've got a few more here uh, talking about the exact connections now. Now that we've established that you can for, just for your audience can bracket the idea that when, when we're talking about Judaism, we are not talking about the synagogue going Jew. The yeah. Jews that I, Michael Tassoyan, I'm addressing are the elite Guyana, the Levitical, British Israelite, royal dynasty, the true Atonist Jews at the top of the pyramid, not the ones that are wearing that name tag, you know, on the street. Yeah. So when we look at these quotes that we're going to go through here, it's very important for people to realize that, that we're not Jew bashing here, or Christian bashing, or anything like that. No, of course not. We're talking about secret society intrigue. Yeah. <laughs> and it's about time that the human race had the facts relating to that. Certainly. Before we go into those, would, shall we do the contest? Uh, yeah, sh absolutely. That would be, be a great idea, actually. Of course. Uh, okay. Let's Yeah, let's take a little break there. And uh, let me, you know, give out the number here first, <clears throat> so that you'll be... Uh, be be re ready. Um, if you get a paper pen, just write up uh, one eight seven seven eight seven six five two two seven. And again, if you're calling from outside the U.S., uh, just add zero zero one. And you can also try another number here: five three zero eight seven six three two two two. And you can always find the numbers on bbsradio.com right in the front page or on uh, my site red-ice.net so uh, yeah sure Michael let's go ahead with a question and we'll take callers later on ok um, this is uh, regarding Stonehenge the stones of Stonehenge uh, are basically the blue stones and then there are the uh, you know the other the other stones that are there now the blue stones um, the, you know there's the blue stones and the Saracen stones the blue stones are known to have been brought to that uh, field of Salisbury Plain from southern Wales, and of course, there's a big, big mystery about how they were even brought from there. Yeah. But the Saracen stones were brought from somewhere else. So, if anybody can, uh, in fact, the Saracen stones were brought from Ireland. So, the question is for the contest: is from what county and what area were those stones of Stonehenge brought from from Ireland? There's, from what county were they brought? Right. And the winner can get the pick of uh, whichever the DVDs are left. Yes, uh, perfect. Okay, there we have the question. And again, uh, call us one eight seven seven eight seven six five two two seven, and we'll take your calls, uh, and we'll see if we can get a, another DVD out. Okay, Michael, should we, you know, go ahead with some of the, uh, yeah. the further pie quotes there? Okay. Now, well, the, the interesting thing is this: that when we're talking about, uh, just as a preview again. When we're talking about Akhenaten, remember, we've been establishing in the past, just like Sigmund Freud had done, that Moses is Akhenaten. Yep. Now, when people hear me, and then they go to the different links, and they try to look this stuff up on the Internet, you're going to be inundated, especially if you buy books. You're going to, you're going to be just having to plow through the, the false story, the fiction. Yeah. You know, and it, it's tremendously difficult to make sense of other people when they're trying to talk about the Moses story, and was Moses found on the Nile, and who found found Moses, yeah. and when did he uh, lead the, you know, the holy people out of Egypt and all of these kinds of things. You're going to have enormous trouble uh, analyzing these other writers' works, because these other writers fundamentally do not understand that Moses was Akhenaten. So let's get that across first, one thing, because I'm having emails from people who are very, who are very confused by all of this. Oh, I can the imagine. confusion is coming uh, because they're reading authors who have not yet made the connection yeah. that the three or four authors that I keep mentioning that we have done, okay? So please realize that when I'm talking about my work uh, with the understanding of Freemasonry, and when I'm talking about Mustafa Gadala and Osman and Ellis, you know, these are a minority of authors 